What's up guys and gals, my name is Splattercat, this is the Nerd Castle, and we are playing Mountain Blade Warband one more time, sitting next to the ashes of our once awesome town Peshmi, which just got wiped out, even though there was a ton of people sitting right here that could have handled it. In any case, I've already wished like that they would die in a pile of death. Does death pile? I think death probably piles. It seems like the sort of thing that might pile. But anyways, I am not happy with any of these guys right now. These guys, they are all on my shit list at the moment. So, let's think about what we want to do in this episode. As of right now, our right to rule is at about 30. A few more campaigns, 50, I've, I've spoken in error in past episodes, so at 50 right to rule, you can convince people to join your side or your own red, fac or red faction, not red faction, we're not trying to build a chorus of birds, but anyways, the, you'll build your own red faction, and you need 50 right to rule to convince anybody to join your side, at least with any type of efficiency. You want it to be a little bit higher though, so we're probably not going to be able to start a red faction for a while. But in the short term, now that we've already been wiped out, I think we're going to go on the offensive and take a look around Rodox land, see if we can't get ourselves into trouble there. We should also take some time out and figure out... Ooh, ooh Hoon paid me a little bit right there. I'll take it, although we are in the red, which is weak, weak, weak. Super, super weak. Weakier than a squeaky bed. Let's go and see if we can start some more profitable enterprises elsewhere. I think the next locations, do we have any, we have loads and loads of borders with Vagir, so we're probably going to go to war with Vagir sometime soon. Let me look at my reports one more time. We've got Tyr, we've got Sargoth, but we've got nothing in Proven or Vercheg. Let's go with Proven for now because I really sincerely doubt that we're ever going to be at war with Nords in the near future. It's probably going to be a while before any of the campaigns get out to that point. Let's head out in the northwestern direction, and once we get there, oh my god, all of those notifications. Yeah, I don't care about you, Ghoulie, sorry. It's a problem, but we couldn't find them. We rode around a little bit in the last episode till we started getting raided, and then we just sort of gave up on it. In case you were wondering why I didn't do that quest. Now then, let's take a walk around the streets. We're gonna go find the Guildmaster, and if we can, we're gonna start ourselves another Silk Enterprise, or another Ironworks, or whatever we can get the most profit out of. You there, in the white fluffy shirt, where is your lord? Nowhere? Well fine then, I didn't want your lord anyways. Let's find out. I think in this town, if I'm thinking about it, I think he's over here by the castle. It's been a while, but I think in Proven he's up and over here. No? Well, I'm completely wrong then, I have no idea what I'm talking about. I thought he was over by the jail in this town set, or this town model. Let's ride. At least we have our horse. There are the plus sides to this. We're on a horsey adventure! And he's coming with us, but he's about to hit these stairs, which are going to completely and totally ruin it for him. Can he zigzag up the stairs? No. He just refuses altogether. He's being a Zoolander horse right now. There are just certain things he can't do. Where in the hell is this guildmaster? I'm becoming confused. I'm vexed. Maybe he's off this way. Did I ride right past you, guildmaster? There's a townsman, an armorer. Is this a little alcove over here? Can we get in this way or is this just... Okay, that's a dead end. It looked for a moment because of the shading like there was a shady alleyway over there. We were going to go walk down it and see if we couldn't get ourselves into trouble. Maybe he's over here. And horse merchant. Alright. Well, I get the distinct feeling I've probably ridden past him about twice now. But if we can't find him in the next couple seconds, I'm probably just going to bail out and quit because, let's be fair, nobody wants to watch me ride around in circles looking for the Guildmaster over the next, like, 25 minutes. We're already, like, four minutes into the episode, yeah, we're running out of time. Like, there are important things to be done here. And while I will freely admit that we really, really, really need to start a profitable enterprise, this is why I wish that the Find Guildmaster button was in native. I hate looking for the Guildmaster, he frustrates me. I have to have ridden past him over here. I think I was right. That or he's hiding in a bush somewhere. He's pulling like an Assassin's Creed on us. Just like, no. We can't let him make a new a profitable enterprise. Killed master. Oh, there he is. I did. I rode right past him. I was right. I knew it. I absolutely knew he was in here somewhere. You'll forgive me. My nose itches. I've got a nasal itch right now. And oh my god, just to pass the time... I cleaned out my bathtub today, and it was bad. I had to put on, like, Isaac Clark armor, and I was in there, it, like, wrapped around my arm, and it was like, no, when I tried to destroy it, like, it wouldn't let me. It had a voice that sounded like Burl Ives. It was terrible. Let's make a new profitable enterprise. What about ale? Four dinars a week. What a massive, massive product. 
Well then, maybe we'll think about oil? Oh, your profit with oil would be 410 dinars a week. Yeah, let's do that. We'll make an oil... I almost said an oil mine, but no, we're not mining for that kind of oil. An oil press. There we are. So we should be making another $400 in the next little bit, or another 400 dinars. Medieval dollars, whatever you want to call them. Medieval euros. And how are we looking on our party composition right now? We've got 99 people. Let's make some more veterans. And you guys keep asking me why I like to click everything. I just do. I like the click, 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 click. I like that for some reason. I don't know why. It brings me joy deep down. It may bother you guys, but it makes me happy. So we're going to do it. I'm going to continue. Yeah, that looks about right. I mean, I feel like I'm monologuing about nothing right now. We've got six Mamluks back up. We really, really, really... I talked about this in the last episode, but we need a little bit of time to recuperate our forces and get ourselves, like, a massive army of, like, 100 top-tier units. I think the reason we've been suffering the kinds of losses we have are partially because I'm a terrible commander. That's the first part, is I play this like an action game. Some people play this like a very, very hardcore strategy game. I play it as though I'm playing, like, God of War or something. I just kind of ride in and say, eh, to hell with strategy. Let's kill stuff. I don't think I'm going to have time to wipe out a caravan right now. Let's head back to our own lands. But we should buy some food first. Things are looking a tad skimp on the food front. We've got a little bit of food left, but I want to move these horses out of the way. I feel like they're in odd spots right now. 300 dinars right there. We're at war with Uxkal, so maybe right out to Dirim, which they took back from Vagirs, which is nice. That's good for us. Kind of wondering when the next big war with... Oh, I could take Dirham right now. 26 men. That would be a pretty worthy snipe. Let's see how long it would take to build the ladders. Oh, it's not going to let me do it. It won't let me take a hostile action right now. That's disappointing. Because I was definitely going to take it. Yeah, there's no option to siege the bugger. Well then. Three of your mates. No, I don't need you and three of your mates. God, there was such a bad joke right there that I was about to make, and I just backed off of it. I backed off of it so hard. I was just like, nope, not going to make a joke about monogamous horse archers and horse cavalry. Just not going to do it. Not going to do it. Let's head back down, and I feel like my camera, there we go, my camera's all catty corner. It's catty wampus, as my mum used to say. Got 130 men right there, probably a conceivable target in the future. We could get away with it, probably. Let's fight with Ralcha down here. We gotta at least do a little bit of the old battering and beating before we can go any further. Got a couple more archers, another Mamluk. Sure, why not? We'll go another footman right there. Everything looks fine. Whatever. <laughs> you thought you could run back to the castle. You are not fast enough, Count Ralcha. You are not ready. You are not prepared. Oh, he liked us too. I feel like we've committed some form of betrayal. I didn't realize that he was going to like us like that. Oh well, our love will never be. Let's put, oh, I don't know, a guy right there. And maybe I'll bring my cavalry around with me. It didn't seem like they were very well equipped for any of this, so I should be able to wipe this army out really, really easily. Raucha, I don't recall what nation he's from, but I had to look around behind me for a second. So this thing has happened at my house where I think I may have bred a super ninja cat. And what I mean by that is my cat is pretty much like the splinter cell of cats at this point. I have two cats, and one of them does not eat. She just like hangs around, she eats like four kibbles, and then she leaves the bowl. Well, the other cat is obese, and he has a problem. Like, he likes to come and eat the other cat's food. And so I scold him and give him like a little swat when he does it. He's like, ah, my ass, and then he runs off. Now, he's gotten very, very good at sneaking kibbles, and he's figured out that the way I hear him most of the time is I hear him crunching. So now he'll take, like, a mouthful of kibbles and drag them into another room and, like, eat them under the bed or something. And it's just like every day he's got a new strategy for stealing kibbles from his housemate. And it's not very kind of him. I'm trying to keep her on par for weight. She's a little skinny right now. And he is very, very obese, and so it's kind of like a double-ended problem. I'm going to kill off some of these archers in the back because they do have a lot of elite archers. They got Vigor marksmen like everywhere. 
No, we lost a Nord Horse Archer. How dare you, Nord Horse Archer? How dare you die before I give you leave to go? Is that a Huskarl right there? What? I'm around with Huskarls and stuff? All right, this is a chaotic battlefield. Hold on, slow, slow. You guys, killing my vibe. You are, you ruined my groove. God, ow. Hey, not cool, man. I was gonna let you retreat until then. All right, I'm lying. I wasn't gonna let you retreat. I was going to slash you in the back violently. I was going to sever your spine if I could get away with it. But you shot me with the arrow, so, you know. You gave me a reason, and usually that's all it takes. Lost a Horse Archer, lost a Veteran Footman, lost... Okay, so that's not terrible. Let's capture some of his troops here. I will take the Marksman for sure. I'll take the Archers too. We need money wherever we can get it at this point. A Masterwork Saber. How does that compare to my Balance Saber? Balance Saber has a better speed rating, but only by one point. That one does more damage. And it's lighter. I'm gonna go with the Masterwork. There we go. The model looks a little different too. Even though they're both... Oh, it's a Nomad Saber. Okay, so it's a little different. I didn't see the modifier in the front. The upper end phrase, which was Nomad. God, another terrible joke right there. I was gonna be like, it's a saber that never gets angry, the Nomad Saber. You get it? <laughs> God, awful. Just awful. Sometimes I make my teeth hurt with my own humor. Like, I get that feeling, you know when you eat ice cream too fast? When I make a bad joke, I get that feeling. Hey, Jelkala, how you doing, guys? I'm out here oppressing your peasants. Maybe you should come out and stop me. Huh? Huh? Anybody want to fight? Doesn't look like it. They're busy getting dominated by Vagirs right now. Vagirs is just rubbing their jubbly bits all over their foreheads. So I don't think they're looking forward to fighting anybody. Well, let's go check out Etrusk and see if it's open. 165 at Etrusk, that'd be a little risky. Nothing over in that region. We have Morris though. Let's go over to Morris and see what it's got. Yep, don't care about the feasts. Really sincerely don't. We should probably focus on getting married too. I think if we get married, we get a bunch of right to rule, if I recall. So this one's sitting at 175 too. Rodox is in an odd situation where they're heavily fortified, but they're not really offensive right now. They're not able to mobilize, except as I say that, Jarl Teraya rolls out here. What does he have? Because if this is like a peasant force, I'll fight him. 44 trained footmen, 48 warriors. The skirmishing period would be nasty on that one, but he doesn't have anything super high tier. 20 archers. The 48 warriors and the trained footmen. Well, his army is not that bad. He only has one Huskarl from what I can tell. Let me move a little bit. I can't tell. The numbers are so small in this resolution. Yeah, he's got one Huskarl. I think we could take him. I think we could take him. Let's do our upgrades. So we've got six Huskarls. Because he's so low level, that's one of the nice things about the Kurgis. It's, I know I rag on the Kurgis a lot, and I'm like, oh, they're terrible, they can't do anything right. But one of the things the Kurgis are really good at is fighting middle tier units. Like, they just chew through middle tier units when they ride in circles and skirmish and just fire arrows at them. It's surprising the amount of damage they can accomplish. It's just up against, like, top tier, like, tier 6 units. I just don't see them doing very well most of the time. Veteran Horse Archer there, another Mamluk. And I think that's it for us. Let's do this thing. Let's live on the edge for a little bit. I know that I like to play things safe in this playthrough, and I know you guys have expressed concern that I don't fight like three versus one. And I think this is one of those battles where we could conceivably come out on top if we did it. And you know how we feel here at the Nerd Castle about being on top. So let's go for it. Worst case scenario, we lose and I have to do a big old recruiting stream. Let's charge the enemy. 96 versus 187. We want to make sure that this battle is being fought to our advantage too. They don't have horsemen or anything like that, not that I know of. I'm gonna have them follow me here. Archers, you're all gonna be right there. Infantry, you're down here. And then for me, I'm gonna ride off to this side to get the cavalry clear. Once we've got the cavalry clear of the rest of our troops, we're gonna send in the charge order, and that should be that. Alright, cavalry charge, do your thing. And so we want to minimize the skirmishing period here. There are a lot of... Oof. There are just loads and loads of javelins flying around. But I am seeing a lot of green tech, so that's always nice. Oh, there goes the first guy. 
And so now that we've minimized the chances that we're going to get Javelin, I think we should do very, very well with respect to the way this fight's going to play out. Let me give the infantry the charge order so they can come in and help. And there it is. We should get a nice little push from this now. I'm going to try and do my best not to get knocked out. And you're like, well, I bet you won't. That's kind of the point of the game is, like, not getting knocked out. But I hate getting obliterated in big battles like this and then having to auto-resolve because obviously you're not going to win if you have to do that. Okay, so the first wave has been fully handled. I'm going to help out over here because I feel like this guy's in trouble at least a little bit. He's getting clubbed, and I would prefer to keep all of my units out of the club. Sorry, 50 Cent. Let's go over here. And now we're at the point where we're kind of broken up. So what I'd like to do now is let's pull back our infantry to that point over there. I'm going to call back all of my cavalry so that we can do another organized charge just in case because I don't know how this whole thing's going to go. It doesn't appear as though we have much cavalry left. I think they got kind of javelined out. And so now what we want to focus on doing is just reforming up and allowing our sharpshooters to do their business. What you'll see is that as we go through these guys, they should start dropping pretty quickly to our ranged units. I am oddly fascinated that we haven't gotten reinforcements yet. This battle was expectedly going to be quite large. But the green seems to be outweighing the yellow still, so we should be okay. There's our reinforcements. So they should be able to deploy pretty quickly. I'm going to wait for the cavalry to come back now. I'm going to give them the charge order to start skirmishing. And let's do our best here to minimize the amount of damage that our archers are going to take. They do have to close a lot of distance here. This is a long hill, and I picked it for a reason, because it's going to slow them down while they're trying to go up it. At the same time, let me deal with some of these archers who are going to be the primary damage dealers to all of our archers on the hill. Obviously, the guys coming up the hill hamburger style aren't really going to be able to get anything done. However, the others that are in the back, you can fire an arrow from any angle. It doesn't really matter. Ah, oh, that battle right there. I want to get in on it, but it's such a zerg blob. It makes me scared. Please don't spear me. I would really prefer to remain. I want to remain unpunctuated. I want to have unpunctured, punctuated. No, we shall punctuate frequently, because that is what a good English person does. A good English major, I meant. Although I'm not an English major, so what do I care? Let's kill off this little guy in the back. Hopefully there's no round two on all this. That would be a super weak sauce. Down he goes. Is that it, guys? It is. So we took the field. I think we got 16 renown for that. I'll have to pay attention to the bottom of the screen. Yeah, there it is. 16 renown. Now, it wasn't without a cost. We lost 20 men. What did we lose? We lost a lot of our frontline guys, and that was to be expected. Anytime you go up in a major fight against Nords, you've just got to kind of expect to lose all of your frontline guys. It happens. We are going to have to do a wave two, unfortunately. So let me tell all my guys to follow me in and get them out of the way. Archers, I prefer that you would be right here. Infantry, I would prefer that you be right there. Cavalry, do whatever, the hell, do whatever the hell you want because you're a bunch of skirmishers on horses with bows, so I can't really control you right now. Just ride around in circles and cause problems. I think I got around the shield right there, but, you know. Alright, infantry, get on in there. Now we've broken them up a little bit. Let's give them a few new slashes. They need some new scars. I've noticed that all of these Nords that they've been putting up against us, they aren't respected in Nordic society because they don't have enough scars, so let's scar them up a little bit. Let's help them become better in their own culture. Because we're nice guys like that. And there it is. Battle complete. Two more guys down, a couple of Serenid horsemen. Yeah, they're not long for this world a lot of the time either. We didn't get to keep him, and he didn't have, god, like a bad pet. We didn't get to keep him. Unfortunately, he didn't have any captives either, so being able to replete our forces or replenish our forces is not going to be an option either. He's got a couple of veterans right there. I should get rid of these footmen and these archers for those veterans because they're worth more. What else do we have here that I could make room with? Nord archers, still not that useful. Even the veteran archers I don't think are worth as much as a normal... Well, they might be. I think Nord warriors and Nord archers are about equal. 
while all that stuff is sort of nice, we're pretty much full up already. 541 dinars for that victory. Not a terrible haul. We should have a nice little core of high tier troops now too. A bunch of people are going to level up from that one, hopefully more than we lost, although I doubt it. A couple of Vigier guards in there. Five more Mamluks. We're up to nine of them. That'll work out. Some more veteran horse archers. So we're looking a little bit more elite. We're, we don't have the most amazing force, but it's working out for us. Let's go back on up to Nordic territory and grab some more grist for the mill foot soldiers. I'd give you a travel montage, but I just don't have enough trucker music, unfortunately. Wish that I did, but I don't. And because we got wiped out right there, it put us back in the red, kind of. Yeah, because our oil press isn't even working yet. Our oil press starts working after two weeks. In case you didn't know, there's a delay. When you build yourself a profitable enterprise, or a productive enterprise, it takes a little while. Nobody there wants to join us. That place has been raided. God. It looks like they took back Kurin, though, which is kind of cool. Seven guys right there. We've got to keep them fed, so I'll try and remember that. And let's see if Ferrychen actually got angry at us. It said we lost reputation with Farmer, but Farmer could just be some random placeholder that they never filled in. Yeah, they still like me. It's all good. Nobody wants to join me, but they still like me. So who cares? What are our numbers looking like? 94? Let's swing out to Ruvar and a couple of these other locations, and we'll still just continue. I still want to have a big old army of Huskarls, just because they are the only frontline unit that I trust to get the job done properly. And since our lands have already been raided, I might as well spend my time up here recruiting, since we've got nothing left to defend. We lost Disturil, we lost Peshmi. We're in a bad way right now. We're definitely at sort of a downslope right now. A little bit of a downslope, but we still got our army. We're still awesome. We're still respected. We're still renowned. So at least everything isn't lost. There are a lot of bandits running around everywhere. You can always tell that it's been a time of nonstop war because there are bandits just all over the place, just crawling. Bunch of manhunters there, bunch of manhunters there. We could clear some of these out. Let me have a look at the party and make sure that nobody's ready to be upgraded because we do have a fairly decent training skill. It's not the best training skill, but it's all right. We're pretty good at killing people near the zone. And let's... Yeah, I don't really care about training up on bandits, to be honest. But we're going to do it anyways. Let's kill off some of these bandit troops. These are pretty big bandit troops, and it's a nice opportunity... I'm going to leave them in peace for just a moment because a bunch more people just got upgrades. And I would like to maximize the possibility of survival for all of my units, while we're here anyways. It's always good to keep an eye on your unit. Okay, let's get on the Tundra Bandits. We're going to kill this group and that'll be the last thing we do in this episode. I want to make sure that they get wiped out. Let me put everybody on follow here. Let's send my cavalry off in that direction. Sit our archers down right here and then we'll sit our infantry out there to make kind of a little shield wall. These guys are all going to have bows, which means that keeping people sort of not lumped together, but in a shield wall can be nice. I don't think we have enough Nordic people to have to worry about it just yet. We should be able to score some kills coming up over the mountain, quantifying what we have. We have a pretty good cavalry force. I'll probably, yeah, let's ride our cavalry out this way, and then we'll jump in on this fight once I see a proper opening. Are you guys already firing right now? I don't see anybody cocking those things, so there they go. I need the infantry to charge right now as a diversion away from all of my cavalry. And then we're going to try and snip, snip, cut them in half. We're going to do a battlefield vasectomy right now. Ooh, look at all that green. What could be better? Well, aside from missing like eight guys in a row, when I should have done a badass charge, I just acted like a failure. What am I going to do with myself? looks like all of our casualties are going to be unconscious people, which is really good. That's what you always hope for. Our surgery is at such a level right now where I'm really hoping it'll start to make a difference, but we still need to keep working on it. It's not absolutely adequate. A couple manhunters we can rescue? Why not? Add them to the pile. A couple taiga bandits, we'll take them. Any masterwork nomad bows in here? No. A large bag of jareeds. I might put those on somebody.
Yeah, we don't have anything else. I should take some of those arrows just in case so I can equip people. Let's do that. Man, we got 181 dinars out of the battle. Not so terrible. Cleared out a bunch of bandits, made ourselves warm, or warm, made ourselves more well known. I don't know how that got mixed up with warm. It's kind of cold in my house right now. Maybe I'm just kind of thinking about being warm. I don't know. Let's sell off. Oop, I don't want to sell that. But anyways, I'm going to do my outro right now since it's about that time anyways. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here in the Nerd Castle for another episode of Mountain Blade Vorband. I hope you guys are enjoying the series. As always, I will see you tomorrow. Take care out there, everybody.